Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day 37 of GC365. I'm Jesse. I'm Jaden. Welcome. Glad you joined us this morning. So, Jaden, we have some interesting passages, and I was told that these were just assigned um, in no particular order. So we've got a few full chapters, and then we've got a couple pieces and parts of chapters. So we get to start with Exodus. So let's go ahead and get into it. So Exodus chapter 23 starts off with talk about three festivals and it's festival of unleavened bread. And we were both saying that neither one of us knows if we've ever had um, unleavened bread, bread without yeast. Um, Then we had festival of harvest and we had um, festival of the final harvest. And then just a random little instruction inserted in this chapter we talked about was don't cook a young goat in its mother's milk. That was pretty weird. Yeah, I did a little bit of research into that. I couldn't find a whole lot on it. So we're just going to let that instruction lie. Do you eat goat? No, (laughs) not that you're aware of. I don't think I have either. I do like goat cheese. I'm not aware, though, that I have had any other goat products. So there you have it. Um, Let's move into Exodus 24. There's a lot of interesting stuff here, and I probably have as Pastor Dan would say, more questions than I have answers. And I'm going to confess to you that I didn't always love questions. Pastor Dan has taught me to make friends with questions. So um, I have a lot of them. This is talking about Moses and his brother Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and then 70 other guys going up the mountain to talk to God. Um, It says in verse 10, it says, There they saw the God of Israel, and under his feet there seemed to be a surface of brilliant blue. And this is called lapis lazuli. And we were talking about this, and I said, Are you, do you know about lapis lazuli? I know it's like a gemstone or something like that. Right. Yeah, I had to do a little research on this as well, and it's a very blue-blue, almost the color of my nails from what I could tell. So next time I'll just walk in and request lapis lazuli. We'll see if they know what I want. But um, they saw God. That's the whole point here. And so I, I can't even wrap my mind around around that. And then it says that, These nobles of Israel gazed upon God, but he did not destroy them. And in fact, they ate a meal in his presence. So we were talking about famous people and who would this even compare to? I think that'd be pretty cool to be like having a famous person and eating with them. Right. And you, who have you met that's famous? Anybody? I've met Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett. Okay. And were you nervous when you met him? Yeah, I wasn't really into football at the time, but now I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I can't even imagine eating and drinking in God's presence. Then we talked about the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain. And we know that he had already climbed the mountain to a certain extent with these elders. And so I'm thinking he was calling Moses up higher. We talked about it's kind of like maybe if you're downstairs and your parents are upstairs and they're saying, come up here for a minute. And Do you always respond on the first time? Depends. (laughs) Does it depend on which parent is calling you? Eh. Depends. Okay. But I'm thinking that if God is telling Moses, come up here, Moses probably went on the first time. Yeah. That's a, just assuming that. Um, then God said he was going to give him the instructions on tablets of stone so he could teach the people. So then it says Moses and Joshua started out and it says Moses climbed up the mountain. And so again, I'm wondering, did Joshua go the whole way with him or did he just go part of the way and Moses went the rest of the way himself? I don't know. So these are more questions that I have. Um, On the seventh day, it says Moses got up there and a cloud kind of descended on the mountain. And so for six days, he's kind of just hanging out up there in God's presence. And we were talking about what would that have been like? And what were you saying? Well, you're just sitting there waiting. Like you got enough food, you got enough water, you got to make sure you got everything you need. Right. Right. So on the seventh day, the Lord called to Moses. Um, So he was just up there hanging out and said to the Israelites at the bottom, it looked like a consuming fire was at the top of the mountain. And then it says um, Moses was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. And we were trying to kind of wrap our heads around how long a period of time that was. That's pretty long. Yeah. If you think um, from November 15th, I I think I counted up to Christmas is 40 days. So there's always a lot that happens from November to December. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a grasp on that was a long time for him to be up there. Um, 
Let's move on to Exodus chapter 25. And you had observation about that. What's going on in that chapter? Well, it tells a lot about how to how they built the covenant. And it's very complicated. There were lots of instructions for the tabernacle. Some different, what were some of the things that were mentioned that God asked them, the people to bring? They needed stuff like gold, silver, thread, olive oil. Yeah. So some of those things, obviously like olive oil, I have at my house. I got mine from Costco. These people were fresh pressing theirs, I'm assuming. Um, then we talked about goat hair. Do you have goat hair at your house? Maybe dog hair. <laughs> dog hair. Lots of people probably have dog hair. Yeah, that's good. Um, ram skins. I don't have any of those laying around. So I would not have spices. I do have spices. So those I could have brought. But all these things that the people were to bring. And then he gave them instructions for building the Ark of the Covenant. And what were you saying about the measurements for that? Well, they were very precise. It was very detailed in the way that it explained how to build. Yeah. And we were both saying that it wasn't a very big piece. It was 27 by 27 by 45, I believe. So not a real huge piece, but yet God was saying he was going to talk to the people from right above, I believe, the, the ark. So really interesting. So whereas we see Moses climbing the mountain to talk to God, now he's saying, build this ark and I'm going to talk to you from right there. So interesting. Um. Let's move on into Matthew chapter two in the New Testament. And again, you and I got some really good stuff. <laughs> what, is, what does it open up with you were talking about? Well, it it's just like the moon will give no light. Mm -hmm. the stars will fall from the sky. It's yeah. just pitch black. Yeah. The top of this chapter is Jesus speaks about the future. And so some really interesting signs. When I was first reading this, talking about um, the moon will give no light, it made me think of um, the eclipse and how just that happens so infrequently. And when we hear that the sun's going to be, you know, darkened for a little bit, it's this fascinating thing that millions of people are going to be watching. And so I can only imagine with these things how the, the effect that they would have as well. Um, it says, and then at last the sign that the son of man is coming will appear, will appear in the heavens and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples. And you and I were talking about what, what is that sign going to be? We don't really know. It doesn't really say, but it says they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And then it says he'll send out his angels and gather his chosen ones from all over the world. And this made me think about heroes and I was asking you, do you like the Marvel movies? I do. I feel like people do. Those those movies make so much money. Um, Thor is my favorite character. Um, he's big. He's got his hammer. What's yours? Did you tell me? Um, probably Iron Man. Okay. Yeah, Iron Man. That's a good one. Um, but I think here in this chapter, we're reading about a real-life hero. Jesus really is coming back, and it says he's coming on the clouds with power and great glory. So even though, like we're talking about, it's hard to wrap our minds around, this is really going to happen. We don't know when, and we talked about that. The Bible says that um, nobody knows the time or the day, but it talks about um, some signs in here. So what what are some of the, one of the signs that we talked about that it mentions? We well, talked about um, a fig tree. Yeah. And how it was going to blossom when he was coming back. Yeah, Jesus said, learn a lesson from nature. When you see branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you'll know that the summer is near. And I was saying, I love Washington because we get early signs of spring. I love to walk and be outside. And so even now you can hear the birds are singing. I have flowers that are blooming at my house. And if you pay attention, the trees, the trees have buds on them even now. And so Jesus is using these things that we see to remind us to pay attention. Um, but it goes on to say, no one knows when he's coming back. It says only the father knows. So really fascinating. Um, it says, so you too must keep watch for you don't know what day the Lord is coming. So heavy, heavy stuff, really interesting stuff as well. Um, we have Psalm 30. How do you feel about the Psalms? Well, some are interesting. Yeah. But this one was sort of normal. Yeah. Yeah, not too much weirdness in here. Um, we both actually highlighted the same verse. What? Tell me, what verse did you pick? Um, verse 3. Yeah. 
Yeah. It talks about you, you brought me from the grave. Yep. Oh, Lord, you kept me from falling into the pit of death. Yeah. And just so happens that was what I had highlighted as well. Why did you pick that? Do you know? It's interesting. Yeah, it was. I had said that it reminds me of a favorite song that I'm listening to right now um, by a couple bands by Maverick City Music and Upper Room. And it's called Remember. And it kind of starts out as a communion song. But then one of my favorite lines in it is, um, we remember and we won't forget how you took our lives from the pit. So that's what that made me think of. I've been listening to that song a lot right now. Um, and then you had another verse that you really liked. Do you kind of remember what the what the gist of it was? Mm-hmm. Talk about that. Well, I, okay, I forgot. I think it was you were saying you've made me as secure as a mountain. Yeah. We were talking about that. That's, I think, especially right now in our world when there's so much interesting things going on. I think that that verse is appealing where God makes us as secure as a mountain. We can know when we trust him that we can still stand secure even when there are uncertain things happening around us. So that's really good. Um, The last verse that I had highlighted from that chapter was verse 11. It says, you've turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You've taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. So it was a good one. Um, Proverbs 7, this is warning about immoral women. So Jaden, at 13, you had a lot of experience with immoral women. No. Thankfully, no. Okay. (laughs) That's good. We're just going to let that one stand. I don't think we really need to go into that a whole lot more. So what what are your closing thoughts on this? What's your overarching, what's your takeaway? It was an interesting, interesting day to read about. Yeah. I think you and I had talked about Jesus is coming back. It's going to happen. That chapter was a good reminder. So just be ready. Right? Yep. All right. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We look forward to seeing you again next time.